Margaret Jo McCullen. And I'm Lynn Bershad. And you're, you're listening, listening to, to The Delicious, Delicious Dish, Dish on, on National, National Public, Public Radio. Radio. <laughs> well, Lynn, Faith and Bagora, I'm happy to say that one of our all-time favorite holidays is upon us. St. Patrick's Day. Now, for most of us, this lusty and raucous celebration means one thing above all else. Gathering with rowdy friends to convivially overindulge in that nectar of the gods. Bicarbonate, Bicarbonate of soda. soda. <laughs> wow, head rush. <laughs> That's right, MJ. This miracle ingredient is the cornerstone of the luscious and savory taste explosion that is Irish cuisine. Where to begin? We could do a whole show alone on the electrifying kaleidoscope of Ireland's dry, flat breads. I could. I have a real weakness for them, as you know. Speaking of weakness, MJ, anyone who knows me knows I have a weakness of my own. I know. You're dangerously anemic. <laughs> well, yes, but actually, I, what I was referring to was my fondness for cabbage. <laughs> Ditto here, yeah. I'd be hard-pressed to find anyone who didn't find a swirling cauldron full of stewed cabbage leaves irrepressibly erotic. <laughs> I find I never feel quite so much a woman as I do when I am standing at the stove, my hair wilted from spectacular amounts of greenish steam, beads of perspiration condensing on the underside of my bosom as the blanched white heads rollick in the foamy boil. <laughs> I'm really lonely sometimes. I know, me too. Mm. Yeah. yeah, it's neat. Fun. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah. Good times. It's good times. Yeah. 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 Well, Margaret Joe, the peat bogs of the Irish kitchen require the navigation of an Irish chef. So we've got someone special here today to make sure your Aaron Go bra isn't Aaron Go blah. <laughs> good Lord, that's funny. <laughs> He's here to steer us through the lepra pros and leprechauns of Irish cooking. Seriously, stop. You are killing me. What can I say? I'm on fire. <laughs> well, please welcome the author of the book, If You Can't Stand the Heat, Get Out of the Fladahnolafalagong. <laughs> the Emerald Lagasse of Galway, Liam Shaughnessy. Hi. Hi. So, Liam, I, I take it that this long Gaelic word in the title here means kitchen. Uh, it does indeed, although in certain counties it is also bawdy Irish farmhand slang for cattle insemination. <laughs> it's, it's neat, it's a homonym. Vulgar. Yeah. <laughs> it's good times. Yeah. yeah. So, Liam, yes, yes. we read your book, Thank and you very much indeed. needless to say, the way you describe rinsing dirt off parsnips yeah. would give James Joyce a run for his money. Yeah. <laughs> well, indeed. And this uh, cookbook is very special to me because I've dedicated each recipe to a special family member. And uh, I, I come from a large and uh, colourful family. For example, my recipe for cod cobbler mm. is a delectable mixture of blanched white fish mm. topped with creamy clotted cheese. Wow. <laughs> Sounds, good. Sounds good. Yeah. It's my brother Declan's favourite dish. Oh, your brother must be so thrilled to be mentioned in your book. Yes, he would be, but he's dead. <laughs> Yes, he died from a parasitic infection he contracted from handling pig droppings. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Yeah. Wow, what better way to memorialize someone than with a wonderful codfish recipe? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. 
Well, that's what they always say. Mm. They do. Mm. That, that they do. Mm. Yes. Mm. Yeah. I also included my cousin Dermot's favourite dish, bruised turnips. Mm. You know, turnips are such an underrated vegetable. They really are. Yeah. <laughs> the beloved of children from six to sixty. Not unlike Dermot, who was 60, but had the mind of a child of six. And yes, indeed, he wandered into the ocean one day, and the nearest we could tell, he ended his days violently sucked into the propeller of an eel trawler. <laughs> <laughs> but his love of bruised turnips is what I'll always remember. <laughs> that, that's touching. Yeah. Powerful. Mm. Oh, and then there's my grand's potato cake recipe, also known as Boxty. Ooh. My gran, you know, she was a colourful woman and uh, she had a rhyme to go with all her recipes. The rhyme for this dish used to go, Boxty on the griddle, Boxty on the pan. If you can't make Boxty, then you'll never get a man. <laughs> you can say that again. <laughs> Box tea on the griddle, box tea on the pan. If you can't make a box tea, then you'll never get a man. <laughs> Your grand sounds like quite a character. She really does. Yes, yes, a dearie, my grand, yes. But now she's dead, you know. It's a funny story, actually. She, she went to be with Jesus after eating a dodgy patch of Uncle Declan's cod cobbler. <laughs> oh, is that the same cod cobbler recipe you have here in your book? Yes, indeed, the very same. Well, that's all the time we have. Join us next week when we spice up the airwaves with a rollicking discussion of Bulger. That'll be good. And on Friday, the Supreme Court ruled that homosexuals could march in Boston's St. Patrick's Day Parade, causing sponsors to cancel the event. A spokesperson said organizers of the parade, which normally attracts loud, drunken revelers, were afraid to include anyone who might cause a disgrace. <laughs> Interesting. And now, here with the St. Patrick's Day song is U2's lead singer, Bono. Bono, what do you got? Thank you. For too many years, St. Patrick's Day has gone hand in hand with reckless consumption of alcohol. But it doesn't have to. I hope this song helps you find other fun things to do this year. Sometimes it's fun to slide on the kitchen floor in a new pair of socks. Sometimes it's fun to paint dots on your face and tell people you have chicken pox. Sometimes it's fun to make a castle out of pudding, chocolate or butterscotch. Then it's fun to take that pudding and rub it all over ex mayor Koch. No doing beer bunks, no Jägermeister shooters, no headbutting your mom, no grabbing your cousin's hooter. <laughs> Don't get wasted, this ain't Patty's Day. Sometimes it's fun to have a staring contest until somebody blinks. Sometimes it's fun to send a bar of soap to a guy you know who stinks. Sometimes it's fun to go to the arcade and try to get high score on Zaxxon. Sometimes I watch the Karate Kid where the guy from Happy Days says wax on. <laughs> People listen to me for goodness sake. You don't need a beer, just have yourself a shamrock shake. So green and creamy. Jalapeno, Shirley Phoenix. Nah, no more getting wasted.
wasted, no more getting silly, no more waking up with two naked guys from Chile. <laughs> For God's sake, stay sober on St. Paddy's Day. Thank you very much. Well, it's St. Paddy's Day, a day of heritage, food, and fun. Let's see what we have in store this year. Do you like my tie? Everyone knows if you don't wear green on St. Paddy's, you get pinched. I'm naughty. Do you like corned beef? I make my own. If you don't get it, kill yourself. <laughs> this is a Guinness. They say it's the same as eating 10 slices of bread, but I never woke up naked after 10 slices of bread. <laughs> How's it going over there, Steven? Good. <laughs> you uh, dressed like a leprechaun this year, bud? Yeah. Steven, what did I say about eating butter? Do it. <laughs> That's right. Oh, look at this, a four-leaf clover. They say they're good luck, but not in my experience. One of these little guys killed my whole family. <laughs> Have you heard of a shamrock shake? I find McDonald's version a bit pricey, so I make my own. I take a glass of milk and leave it outside for a week. <laughs> Almost ready. <clears throat> ah. Book of Irish quotations. Oscar, Oscar Wilde says, we are all in the gutter, but some of us are looking at the stars. Not bad for a stupid mick. <laughs> hey, what do you got there, Steven? I found a pot of gold. I think that might be a big jar of mustard, bud. <laughs> Tastes like gold. <laughs> Steven, how do we know each other again? <laughs> you won me. <laughs> That's right. My dream is to go to Ireland and kiss the Blarney Stone. Until then, I'm just gonna have to work with this guy. <laughs> Fake it till you make it, I guess. Oh, this is St. Patrick. And this is St. Catrick. <laughs> it's not sacrilegious if it makes you smile. <laughs> Ooh, look at these. These are potatoes. Guess we won't die of a potato famine this year. More likely, the flu. <laughs> huh. Lucky charms. It's like the little mascot always says, it puts the lotion in the basket. <laughs> Or it gets the hose again. <laughs> What's going on over there, Stephen? Making shepherd's pie. Getting the crust, you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Stephen. Here's a needlepoint on my grandmother's favorite Irish saying, Aaron Go Brockovich. <laughs> The Irish have a rich tradition of poets, artists, and statesmen. I made a collage of some of my favorites. I only bring it out once a year, then leave it out for the other 364. On St. Paddy's, I always watch my favorite movie about Ireland. Kathy Ireland Total Fitness Workout. I know one body part that's gonna be sore afterwards. I should explain real quick. I use my legs to masturbate. Help me, help me! The lamb is eating all my gold. <laughs> An 
An Irish mojito. Yes, please. St. Patty's Day. Happy St. Patty's Day, Stephen. Happy St. Patty's Day, Stephen. Happy St. Patty's Day, Lamb. Happy St. Patty's Day. <laughs> Happy St. Patty's Day from Sir Liam Neeson, Leprechaun and the Lion. And today is St. Patrick's Day, which means millions of tourists have come to the Big Apple. Here with some tips for what they could check out is our weekend update city correspondent, Stefan. Thank you, thank you so much for joining us, Stefan. Connor, Percy, it's nice to be here. So, thank you, Stefan. So, so the parade is now over. I bet a lot of people are out there looking for a great New York hangout. Do you have any recommendations? Yes. If you're drunk in Midtown, doing cheap coke off your laundry card, I have just the place for you. New York's hottest club is Gersh. Inspired by true events. This, this former CVS, which became a Chase Bank and then became a CVS again, <laughs> has a familiar yet troubling feel, like when Larry King would play himself in a movie. <laughs> this place has everything. Desk sets, key fobs, kale chips, Roman J. Israel Esquire. <laughs> Plus, you can play everyone's favorite party game, The Stranger. Now, what's The Stranger? Do you know that Billy Joel song, The Stranger? Yeah. Well, it's when you sit on Billy Joel's hand until it's numb, and then you rub yourself with it. Wait. Wait. Wait, why, why does it have to be numb? so you can pretend it's Bruce Springsteen's hand. <laughs> okay. All right, so, Stefan, let's get back on track, okay? I think, I think a lot of people are in town for St. Patrick's mm -hmm. Day, and they might be looking for something a little different, you know? Yeah, something more Irish-themed. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Moonlight, La La Land, <laughs> you're both right. <laughs> <laughs> If, if you're Irish or just white and violent, <laughs> I have the St. Patty's place for you. New York's hottest Irish club is off the church, mother. <laughs> Located in the clogged heart of the Bronx at the corner of 3000th Street and Gary Marshall Memorial Drive, this gang-ridden skateboard park was the ceremony spot for Vern Troyer's 2004 wedding. <laughs> this place has everything. Peeps, TED Talks, Roman J. Israel Esquire. <laughs> and be sure to hit the dance floor and do a jig with Ireland's hottest Farrakhans. Wait, Louis Farrakhan is at this club? No, Farrakhans, leprechauns that look like Farrah Fawcett. <laughs> Also, yes, Minister Farrakhan will be there. <laughs> All right, Stefan. Please, call me by your name. Fine, Colin, just give us that one place. Tell us that one place that ordinary tourists might enjoy, please. Yes, 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 yes. If you're ordinary and you love seizure-inducing Malaysian music, <laughs> I have just a place for you. New York's hottest club is Stand clear of the closing doors, please. <laughs> Built in the upside down world, this haunted hospice was closed when inspectors found a sexy form of asbestos that could cause disease. Now, what disease do you get from sexy asbestos? Misohornioma. <laughs> This place has everything. Young popes, old popes, <laughs> Roman J. Israel Esquire. 
would avoid the dance floor on Wednesdays when, dozen, when a dozen hot dachshunds and corgis get in free. They call it long and low nights. I don't trust any dog whose stomach touches the ground. Plus, you can party in the VIP room with a group of human squatty potties. Uh, what is a human squatty potty? It's that thing of, you know what? It's a new era, and I don't want to say a word that could be insensitive. May I consult my lawyer quickly? Sure, yeah. Great. He's an attorney and a conceptual piss artist <laughs> named Shy. Shy? <laughs> Hi, Shai. Hello, gentlemen. How are you? <laughs> Shai, do people still use the word? My girlfriend. Okay, yeah, she's not <laughs> Got it. Thank you, Shai. <laughs> Shai. <clears throat> Human squatty potties. It's that thing of when you sit on the toilet. And to have good posture, two little people <laughs> crouch on the bathroom floor and you put your feet on their heads. <laughs> I'm really glad you made sure to make that not insensitive. Thank you very much. That's on great. that note, let's take a closer look at political correctness. Wait, isn't a closer look Seth's thing? Oh, Seth and I are versatile. Some nights I do it and he's under the desk. <laughs> <laughs> it's Stefan, everyone. Just dying 2020. <laughs> so we can that on Michael Che. Call Joe's good night. <laughs> <laughs>